So Keep on Going with Your Silly Dream by Piter on AO3, read by Lily6645. This fic may include mentions of suicidal thoughts. That is your warning. Chapter 62. Night Eye Giggles? Not clickbait. Emotional. Summary. Night Eye Loki tweaks out and Isuku does his tweaking out when he gets back home. What, what does that mean, sir? Izuku squeaked out, taking a few steps away again. Unfortunately for him, Sir Nighteye was a very tall man and was standing in front of him once more in only two strides. He glared at Izuku, but it didn't seem truly malicious. Not like, you said you were a fan. Izuku nodded in response. Then surely you, you're aware of my quirk. Yeah, it's premonition. This quirk allows the user to see the future if whoever they use it on. It's unknown whether or not it has a limit to how far or what perspective, since you didn't really answer the press. That's enough, the pro interrupted. Izuku's mouth shut with a click. You know I can see the future. What I've seen should be set in stone. It always is. Uh, yeah? Sir Night Eye lowered his voice, mindful of eerie. I was supposed to die. So were you and Mirio. Overhaul was supposed to escape with the girl. I saw it. The reel was blank after this fight. It was supposed to be over. The vigilante swallowed. Well, the future can always be changed, right? No. The man glared down at Izuku. Hands curled so tightly they shook. No, it can't. Once I've seen it, it happens. So tell me, why were you able to defeat Overhaul? E save Airy and mitigate casualties. What the hell did he want Izuku to say to that? I, I, uh... I guess I'm a really good vigilante? His eye twitched. This was how Izuku was going to die. After all the pain, after escaping overhaul, after deciding he wouldn't kill himself, a pro hero would be the one to end him. An odd noise, choked almost, left Sir Night Eye's throat as he placed a hand against his face and again until was he laughing? He was! Yuri looked surprised but her eyes seemed to shine at the sound of the pro hero's unbridled happiness. At least she knew he'd ended up okay. Baby Steps Izuku decided to take this opportunity to quickly lunge out of the window, landing against the thick shrubs below. Oddly, even as he ran from the scene, he wasn't chased. Out of everything from his life, literally, Sir Night Eye laughing had to be the oddest experience by far. It was dark and getting colder. He was on wood. He was on metal. He wasn't at the base, was he? There was hardwood beneath his feet. Or was it wet, sticky tile? Was there a police siren? Or a small girl screaming from the chair next to him? 
Had he escaped? Was he truly together? How many pieces of organs and bone had he lost? Really lost? Wake up. Izuku jerked up with a gasp, scrambling up from the floor and vomiting out the window. He gripped the prick below the windowsill with such force he he feared he'd have scrapes on his fingers. Three fingers. The prints of his fingers. The structure. Three fingers taken off for observation. Were they stitched? Was he home? Was he at the base of overhaul? Had he escaped? Was he truly together? Izuku gripped his forearm with shaking fingers, screaming out in pain as they found the cache there. But that pain meant he was real. Izuku was real and awake and alive. Slowly, the teen staggered back, collapsing against the ground with a shudder. He's right hand rested against his chest, feeling the rapid tempo of his own heartbeat. Had he escaped? Was he truly together? He curled up under his all might blanket, wishing to stop the shivers wrecking his body. It didn't help. He slept easier against the wet, silky, sticky tiles. At least then he wasn't alone. At least then he wasn't cold. Izuku found his eyes drawn to the floorboard, which housed all his important items, which housed seven red bullets, seven red bullets that could end that could take away any quirk. But Ragdoll's quirk was so useful. I just had to take it. How could I not? Even if that quirk was taking others' quirks, he had escaped. But was he truly together? That was the end of chapter 62. On to the next chapter. Chapter 63, The Eraserhead Interlude, 4. Aizawa was used to seeing weird. It came with the job. But seeing Uraraka trip All Might in the hallway? Or his own kid forcing Bakugo to spin for 30 minutes straight? Not even mentioning the can of worms Hizashi had been? The pro had glanced up at his class, or more specifically, at Shinso and Uraraka. The two had never been not friends, but they'd certainly never been close. There was only one thing that linked them, or more specifically, one person. They whispered in the back corner at Uraraka's desk eyes shifty. Oh, hell no. He didn't trust that for a second. Uraraka, Hitoshi, come out here for a minute. Aizawa called out as the bell rang. The quicker he got out, the better, considering how his roommate had been acting. Yikes. Once the two students had filed out behind him and shut the door, he glared. His own soon foster son? Future adopted son? Hitoshi looked unbothered, while the poor brunette had gone pale. What's going on? He asked flatly, crossing his arms. <laughs> Nothing, Mr. Aizawa. <laughs> Why would 
something be going on? Uraka said, hands waving frantically. Shinso pinched the bridge of his nose. You always assume we're doing something bad, Shinso scoffed. Because you always are. Shinso stared for a moment before nodding. Fair, but I don't want to miss out on Yamada's class. Lots of English to learn, right, Araka? Uh, uh, tones! Bye, Aizawa. See you later. The underground hero knew he'd regret letting them go. It was just a matter of when. He said as much to Hazashi during their shared break, but, as usual, got nothing helpful back. Only a few stammered words before the pro had retreated from the teacher's lounge. Why was he being weird? Had Shota been too obvious and made it awkward? His leg bounced harshly, hands white knuckling his pants. Had he fucked up? He hoped he could fix it. He missed his best friend. Azawa's eye twitched. No. What? Why not? Yahoo huffed, the vigilante obliterating the McDonald's Aizawa had brought as a peace offering. Because you can't be any older than my students. You're not going undercover in the goddamn League of Villains. But... I can destroy them from the inside out, and I know if they try to break out all for one or overhaul, and I can warn you about attacks and- Kid, I said no. Finally, the prat shut his mouth. Do you place any value on your life? Really, do you? We have people for this. Not everything has to be done by you. But I can- The vigilante cut himself off and shoved a few fries beneath the black bandana. He didn't need to finish it. Despite what Yahoo seemed to think, Aizawa was no fool. No way in hell those bullets had actually been destroyed. Yahoo, not everything has to be done by you. Shota w- repeated, praying the kid would listen as if he didn't already know the outcome. It's not logical for you, completely untrained, to attempt to infiltrate a group so notorious. Don't do anything. Anything you'll regret. Yahoo would make a horrible and unbelievable excuse and run away with his food. Aizawa knew it was coming. It always did. I won't. You will. The pro scrubbed a hand down his face. We just got you back, Yahoo. Why are you in such a hurry to throw your life away? Silence. Dead silence. Listen. I heard the police. I have to go. For the second time that day, Aizawa let a teenager go. Stubborn brats. He'd be gray by 40 at this rate. Hazashi! The blonde yelped as he entered the house, quirk thankfully silenced by Aizawa's quirk. The black-haired man only glared forward, even as the voice hero swallowed and slowly approached. We need to talk. Talk? Hazashi squeaked out, face bright red, presumably from nerves. About what? Lower your volume. Sorry, show. You're avoiding me, and hardly talking when we are near each other. 
You just sit there and stare, Aizawa grumbled, crossing his arms. He can see his roommate, crush of 15 years, swallow nervously. And finally, I like my new girlfriend. Yep, she's been keeping me busy. What the fuck? What? <laughs> that is right. Got a girlfriend and the other week. Uh, I'm going to Namuri's for a while. If Hitoshi asks. Oh, okay. See ya, show. The door shut before the blonde finished. Thank God he couldn't take another word. This was Aizawa's last straw. Okay, not really, but it was pretty damn close. That is the end of chapter 63 of So Keep On Going With Your Silly Dream by Piter on AO3. If you like this, please go support the original author. Link in the description below. Hope you have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, kittens!